Have you ever wondered if the Bible's prophecies are coming true right before our eyes? What if I told you that we could be living in the exact days foretold thousands of years ago? There are five major prophecies that could unfold any moment. Events that could change everything we know about life, faith, and the world around us. This is not something far off in the future. It could happen in your lifetime. In this video, we're going to break down these prophecies and what they mean for you and your family. Whether you're a believer or just curious about what the Bible says, I promise, by the end of this video, you'll see why now, more than ever, it's important to pay attention to these signs. So let's dive in and uncover the truth about these Bible prophecies that are on the verge of becoming reality. You don't want to miss this. The first prophecy, the rapture. A global event like no other. Imagine a day that starts like any other, but within the blink of an eye, the world is plunged into awe. The brilliant light floods the sky, and as you gaze upward, there is the unmistakable sight of the Lord descending from the heavens. The rapture, a magnificent event where believers are gathered to meet Jesus, will be anything but secret. Despite what some may think, this prophecy tells us that when the rapture happens, it will be seen and felt by all. Jesus himself spoke of this incredible event in Matthew 24, 31. He describes angels descending to gather his faithful from every corner of the earth, accompanied by the sound of trumpets echoing through the heavens. The rapture will be a spectacle beyond imagination, a moment so powerful it will be impossible to miss. It's important to remember that Jesus is not coming alone. All believers who have passed on will rise first to meet him, followed by those still alive on earth. This reunion of the living and the dead in Christ marks a pivotal moment in the timeline of God's plan. It's a day of joy, not fear, where no one who has trusted in the Lord will be left behind. The original Greek word for air used in the New Testament adds an intriguing dimension to this prophecy. The word suggests we will meet the Lord not in the farthest reaches of the sky, but in the atmosphere surrounding us. The rapture will occur within our realm, in the very air we breathe. It's an intimate, close encounter with the divine, as the archangel announces the arrival of Christ and the heavens erupt with the sound of trumpets. For those skeptical about the term rapture, it's important to understand that while the exact word might not be in our Bibles, the concept is there. The Greek term harpazo, meaning to be caught up, is used repeatedly in scripture to describe moments where individuals are swiftly and suddenly taken. Think of Philip in Acts 8.39, when the Spirit of the Lord caught him up immediately after baptizing the Ethiopian eunuch, or Paul's friend in 2 Corinthians 12 who ascended to the third heaven. These moments of divine departure are glimpses of what the rapture will be like. Sudden, unstoppable and glorious. The rapture will not allow for hesitation. There will be no time for last-minute decisions or changes of heart. Jesus warned in Matthew 24, 40, 41, and Luke 17, 34, that when he returns, two people may be standing together. One will be taken and the other left. That's why it's crucial to stay spiritually vigilant. We don't know the hour or the day, but we do know that we must be ready. The second prophecy, the rise of the last Antichrist. While the rapture brings hope, the Bible also warns us of darker times ahead, marked by the rise of the Antichrist. This figure will emerge as a global leader during the tribulation, deceiving many with his charm and promises of peace. Initially, the Antichrist will appear as a savior of sorts, uniting nations under his influence. But his true, sinister nature will soon be revealed. The Antichrist's goal is nothing short of domination. He will claim godlike powers, demand worship, and ruthlessly target those who refuse to submit to him. Though the Bible refers to the Antichrist by various names, the beast, the man of sin, the lawless one, his purpose remains the same, to oppose Christ and lead people astray. According to 2 Thessalonians 2-3, the Antichrist will be exposed for who he truly is, a figure of lawlessness, before Christ's ultimate return. Daniel's prophetic vision of the Antichrist in Daniel 7.25 describes him as a terrifying creature 
who speaks arrogantly against God, leading people astray with his lies. Revelation 13 adds further details, describing the Antichrist as a beast who rises from the sea with seven heads and ten horns, symbolizing his widespread influence and power. For three and a half years, the Antichrist will reign unchallenged, performing deceitful signs and wonders to bolster his claim as the ruler of the world. Yet, his reign is temporary. While the Antichrist may seem unstoppable, his downfall is inevitable, as Jesus Christ will ultimately return to defeat him. Now, as we reflect on the power dynamics of this prophecy, it's fascinating how forces of influence and control play a role in both the spiritual and physical world. Speaking of influence, have you ever wondered how certain simple rituals can have a profound effect on your own life? Imagine attracting abundance into your life effortlessly. According to a PhD neuroscientist, there's a seven-second Tesla ritual that is said to attract money to you. Curious to learn more? Check out the link in the first pinned comment below to discover how this method could potentially bring positive changes into your life. Now let's get back into the exploration. The Third Prophecy The Battle of Armageddon The Final Showdown among the most dramatic and pivotal prophecies in the Bible is the Battle of Armageddon, the ultimate and final showdown between the forces of good and evil. This moment represents the climax of God's redemptive plan, a moment when the Antichrist's reign of terror will be challenged and defeated. Throughout Scripture, Armageddon is described as not just a global war of nations, but as the definitive spiritual war where Jesus Christ will personally confront the Antichrist and his followers. Armageddon begins as the world reaches the peak of chaos. The Antichrist, who has risen to power by deceiving the nations, will face resistance from other world powers. As described in Daniel and Revelation, nations from the north and south will rise against him, leading to a global conflict of unprecedented proportions. The Bible describes widespread unrest as alliances are formed and broken, with the Antichrist desperate to maintain his grip on the world. But despite his seeming invincibility, the cracks in his empire begin to show, setting the stage for the final battle. What makes Armageddon more than just a physical battle is its deeply spiritual significance. It's not just armies and weapons clashing on the field of battle. It's a moment where the ultimate question of authority, power, and righteousness is settled. The book of Revelation 1616 tells us that the armies of the world will gather at a place called Megiddo, a valley in northern Israel, for this final confrontation. But the battle is not merely about earthly kingdoms fighting for control. It is about the forces of evil, led by the Antichrist, standing against the forces of righteousness, led by Jesus Christ himself. The Antichrist, who for years has deceived and manipulated the world into believing he is its rightful ruler, will finally face the truth of his downfall. His reign of deception, false miracles, and cruelty will come to a halt as Jesus returns to earth to reclaim his authority. Revelation 19 paints a powerful image of this moment, where Jesus Christ, riding a white horse and leading the armies of heaven, will descend from the clouds to bring justice. He will not come as a humble servant, but as a conquering king, ready to establish his reign once and for all. The Bible says that Jesus will defeat the Antichrist with the mere word of his mouth. His power is so great and his authority so absolute that no army or weapon formed against him will stand. Revelation 19, 11, 21 describes how Christ's word alone will strike down the nations that oppose him. The forces of darkness, which have plagued the world for so long, will be obliterated in a swift and decisive victory. The Antichrist, who appeared so powerful, will be exposed as nothing more than a pawn of evil, and he will be cast down, along with all those who followed him. This battle is more than just the defeat of one man. It's the defeat of sin, evil, and rebellion against God. Armageddon represents the final victory of good over evil, where Jesus not only claims his rightful place as King of Kings, but also restores justice and peace to the earth. It is the moment when every wrong will be made right, every injustice avenged, 
and every act of cruelty and wickedness punished. For believers, the prophecy of Armageddon is both sobering and hopeful. It reminds us of the reality of spiritual warfare and the ultimate consequences of rebellion against God. But it also fills us with hope, knowing that no matter how dark things may get, Christ's victory is assured. His reign will be one of perfect justice, peace, and righteousness, and those who follow him will share in that victory. As the world continues to face chaos, uncertainty, and increasing tension, the prophecy of Armageddon serves as a reminder that no matter how powerful the forces of darkness may seem, they are not permanent. The reign of evil is temporary, and it will crumble under the power and authority of Jesus Christ. Armageddon is not just the end of the Antichrist's rule, it is the beginning of Christ's eternal reign, where he will establish his kingdom on earth, bringing peace, joy, and restoration to all who have put their trust in him. In this prophecy, we see the ultimate fulfillment of God's plan for humanity, a world where evil is no more and Christ reigns supreme forever. The Fourth Prophecy the mark of the beast and the seal of God. During the tribulation, another prophecy will unfold. The mark of the beast. According to Revelation 13, 16, 17, the Antichrist will require everyone to receive a mark on their right hand or forehead, without which they cannot buy or sell. This mark symbolizes allegiance to the Antichrist and a rejection of God. In contrast, Revelation also speaks of the seal of God a divine mark of protection given to those who remain faithful to him. This seal is not a visible mark, but a spiritual symbol, showing that God's people are under his care. While the world succumbs to the chaos of the tribulation, those with God's seal will be sheltered from the full brunt of the calamities. The mark of the beast represents a critical choice, to follow the ways of the world and its corrupt leader, or to stand firm in faith, even when it seems like the entire world is against you. This prophecy reminds us that, in the end, allegiance to God will bring ultimate protection and victory. The Fifth Prophecy The New Heaven and New Earth The final prophecy we'll explore today is one of the most beautiful and hopeful promises in all of Scripture. The creation of a new heaven and a new earth. After all the trials and tribulations, after the wars and suffering brought by the Antichrist, after the final battle of Armageddon and the ultimate victory of Christ, God promises to make everything new. This is where the entire story of humanity is heading, a future filled with peace, joy, and eternal life. In the book of Revelation, chapter 21, we are given a glimpse of this incredible moment. Christ's victory over sin and death leads to the creation of a new world, one without pain, sorrow, or death. Imagine that for a moment, a world where every tear is wiped away, where grief and suffering no longer exist. All the brokenness we see around us, from sickness to heartache, will be completely erased. This prophecy tells us that God's plan isn't just about rescuing us from the trials of this world. It's about creating something entirely new, something perfect. At the heart of this prophecy is the New Jerusalem, a glorious city that descends from heaven, prepared by God himself. This city represents the culmination of God's redemptive plan, the ultimate home for all believers. It's described as a place of unimaginable beauty and purity, where the streets are made of gold and the gates are made of pearls. But more than just its physical beauty, the New Jerusalem is significant because it symbolizes the restoration of our relationship with God. The barriers that sin created between us and God will be gone forever. In this new creation, God will live among his people, just as he intended from the beginning. The Bible tells us that his presence will fill the city, and we will live with him, in perfect harmony, for all eternity. What's most incredible about this prophecy is the promise that the old order of things will completely pass away. The struggles we face in this life, disease, death, violence, corruption, will be no more. The new heaven and new earth will be a place of righteousness, where everything that is wrong in this world will be made right. Can you imagine a world where there is no more injustice, no more division, no more hatred, 
A world where love, peace, and truth reign supreme. That's the world God promises to create for His people. This prophecy offers us the greatest hope of all, a future that is not just an escape from the troubles of this world, but a complete transformation of reality. The new heaven and new earth will be a place where we, as believers, will experience the fullness of God's love and grace. It's not just about avoiding the hardships of the tribulation or escaping the destruction of the end times. It's about stepping into a new existence where we will live in perfect communion with our Creator, where every need is met and every heart is full. The new heaven and new earth are not just a dream or a fantasy. They are a promise from God, a guarantee that the pain and suffering of this world are not the end of the story. This prophecy is a reminder that no matter how dark things may seem, no matter how much the world around us may fall apart, God is still in control, and He is working toward a future that is beyond anything we can imagine. So, as we face the challenges of life, as we witness the chaos and uncertainty in the world, let's hold on to this hope. The trials we endure now are temporary, but the glory that awaits us is eternal. The new heaven and new earth are God's final act of redemption, His way of making everything right. It is the fulfillment of His promise to His people, a promise of eternal life, peace and joy in His presence. This prophecy is a call to remain faithful, to keep our eyes fixed on the future that God has prepared for us. It's a reminder that no matter what happens in this world, our ultimate home is with Him. In a place where there will be no more pain, no more sorrow, and no more death. It's a promise that should fill us with hope, anticipation, and joy as we wait for the day when all things are made new. In conclusion, stay ready, stay faithful. The five prophecies we've discussed today point to the urgency of our times. From the incredible event of the rapture to the rise of the Antichrist, the climactic battle of Armageddon, the trials of the mark of the beast, and the glorious creation of the new heaven and earth. These are not just distant, abstract ideas. They are very real, and they could happen sooner than we expect. The Bible consistently reminds us to stay vigilant and spiritually prepared, for no one knows the day or the hour of Christ's return. But the good news is, we don't need to live in fear. The prophecies are a call to faith, not anxiety. They urge us to strengthen our relationship with God, to seek His will in everything we do, and to hold fast to the promises of salvation and eternal life. The Lord's return is not just a moment of judgment. It's the fulfillment of the greatest hope believers have, the promise of eternal peace and communion with God. In times of uncertainty, we must remember that God's plan is perfect. Each prophecy is a step toward the restoration of all things, and for those who are in Christ, it is a promise of triumph. So let's not merely wait, but actively prepare by living lives full of faith, love, and service. Continue praying, studying the Word, and sharing the Gospel with others, because you never know whose life you may change before these events unfold. I would love to hear your thoughts about these five incredible prophecies. Do you believe we're living in the end times? How do you think these events will play out? Share your insights in the comments below, and let's engage in a meaningful discussion about our faith and future. If this video has blessed or inspired you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. Together, we can help spread the message and get more people thinking about these critical times. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on more videos like this one. We dive deep into biblical prophecy, spirituality, and faith every week to help keep you informed and inspired in your walk with Christ. Thank you for watching, and remember, stay vigilant, stay faithful, and always be ready. Christ could return at any moment. Until then, let's continue to grow in faith together. God bless.